Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 18 of my video tutorial on how to make Android apps. Today, we're going to cover a ton of different things. I'm going to cover broadcast, broadcast receivers, services, intent services, and how to download, save, and read files from the Internet. Of course, in the description is a link to all of the code that is heavily commented, so definitely check that out. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so this is basically what we're going to do. It's Again, the interface is very simple, but what goes on in the background is a little bit complex. So what we're going to do is we'll have our little app, and whenever you click on Download File, it is going to call what is called an intent service. And how you use these is basically by triggering an intent to start a background service so that we do not disturb our UI in any way. And we're doing something a little bit intensive. We are downloading a file in the background. Then, of course, we're going to go and download the file. Whenever the file is downloaded, the intent service is going to be pulled about it being downloaded and at this point in time it is going to send out a broadcast and an Android broadcast just triggers an event that a broadcast receiver which is going to be over in our main activity can then act on what the broadcast receiver is going to tell our main activity to do is go and read that file that we just downloaded and then it's going to put it over in the editable text box on the left hand side inside of our app so now let's go and make all this Okay, so here I am inside of Android Studio, and I know you guys know how to lay out and drag buttons and put editable text boxes inside of here, so I went and did that ahead of time. And let's move that off to the side, and basically you can see our button here and everything that you have right there. One thing we're going to need to do, however, is whenever our button is clicked on, we're going to have to call for our intent service to execute. Let's put our little mouse inside of there, come over here to the little light bulb, and create start file view in main activity. And there you can see it is right there. And we're going to be bouncing around a little bit, that's why I put that little diagram there in the beginning, so that you'll be able to track exactly what we're doing. Alright, so we're going to create the intent service here in a second, but what we're going to do now is create an intent to run that intent service right inside of here. And again, this is going to be triggered whenever they click on the button. So intent intent is equal to new intent, and then in this for the context and then we're going to go file service this is going to be the name of our intent service class and there that is now we're going to be passing in a URL so that it knows exactly what to download so we're going to go intent put extra and I structured everything so that you could easily copy and paste whatever code you need here so it's extra helpful now we're going to get this for my website over here, I have a little excerpt from Lord of the Rings, so I'm going to copy this URL, jump back over, and paste it inside of there. So that's what we're going to be reading off the internet. You can read anything, of course. Just wanted to do it that way so that I know it's always there. And then we're just going to start our intent service by just saying start service, and then passing in our intent. And that's all we got there for main activity for now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over into file service and create our intent service. And like I said before, an intent service is just used to handle long running processes so that the UI isn't interrupted in any way. And if you have multiple intent services or you make multiple requests, let's say to download multiple different text files off the internet, it's going to go through one, download it, and then go on to the other. It's not going to try to download multiple files at once. And you can see right here, it's called file service, and it's going to extend intent service. And of course, we're going to have to bring in some methods here. Implement methods, and it's going to do that for us. On handle intent is specifically what we need. So go OK, and there it is. Now one thing we're going to want to do here is we're going to have to alert main activity, and that's mainactivity.java right there. We're going to have to alert it whenever this intent service finishes downloading. So what we're going to do here is provide a way to identify that. So public static final and string and we're going to give this the name of transaction done and it's going to be equal to and let's go and put something unique in here like com you think tank and you would put in whatever your domain name is and transaction done. So there we go. We know we have a unique name for it. And then something else we're going to need to do. I almost never say this, so this is something just to ignore. What we need to do here is come in and go public, file service. I'm going to tell you what exactly what this does, but like I said, it's not that important. You just need it. And you're going to say super file service dot class dot get name. And the reason why you need to do that is this is going to validate the resource references inside of our Android XML files. So I can show you in a second the error that it is caused whenever this isn't put in here. So basically this just handles an error for us. And then we can create another constructor here, file service, 
string name and super. So that's not the important stuff. Down here inside of on handle intent, this is going to be called whenever our intent is called to execute. And this is where most of the stuff's going to be. And you could go in here and put a log file to track. Let's say I want to go file service, service started, and that's going to allow you to track when it starts. And now we're going to start actually doing some things. So we're going to go in here. The very first thing we're going to do is get our past URL so that we know where to download data from. And to do that, intent, get string extra. There it is. And URL is the name we assign to that. And then we are going to, in another method, download our file, which we're going to create in a second. And we're going to pass it our URL. Then if we wanted to, we could come in here and do something like service stop and we'll know that the service stopped right there. Another thing we're going to want to do is go over into the Android manifest.xml file. A couple things we got to do here. Since we're going to be downloading things from the internet, we need to get permission to do that. So use it as permission, and specifically we want the internet here. So many things we have to get permission for. There it is. And then of course close that off. So now we have permission to download off the internet. And then we need to declare our service, and we're going to declare it right here in between the end of the activity and the application. And to declare it, let's go service, and the name is going to be file service, which is the name of our class. There it is. And then exported, and in this situation, we'll say false. And there we go. So now we know the service exists in there. We need to tell the manifest all about that service because this doesn't have a UI. It's just something that runs some code in the background for us. And now since we're inside of here, I'm also going to, after the file's been downloaded, I'm going to broadcast an intent back to main activity whenever our file is downloaded. So I'm going to create another intent. And this is a broadcast that our main activity is going to be able to catch. Like I said, broadcast just triggers an event that our broadcast receiver is going to be able to work with. So transaction done, that's the name of our event that it's gonna be looking for. And then I'll just say file service, this, and then send broadcast. And that is going to pass that in. And we'll just put I inside of there. And there we go. So we're going to be able to come in here on handle intent. It's going to go. It's going to download our file. It's going to stop our service when the file is done. It's going to alert it using a broadcast. The broadcast receiver over in activity main or main activity is going to catch that. And then it's going to put all the information into our editable text box. So that means we have to come in here and actually download our file. And as you can see, download file right here. It's going to get a URL it's going to have to download from. Let's just say, I guess, say protected, and it's not going to return anything. Name of it is download file, and it's going to read a string, and that's going to be the URL that we're going to download from. Let's just come in here and define the name for our file that we're going to be working with. Uh, let's just keep it simple and just say my file. That's going to be the name on our system for our file that we're going to download, all that Tolkien text. And then because we're going to be doing some things that could go wrong, I'm going to throw a try block inside of here. First thing I'm going to need to do is create an output stream to write data to a file. So file output stream, let's just call that output stream is equal to, and then I'm going to call open file output and file name. I have to give it the file name. And then specifically, I'm going to say that th this data right here, or this data in this file needs to be private to everyone except for my application. So context.mode private. There we go. Then it's going to pop up a little error that I need to add some catch clauses. So just let it do that for me. Now I need to get my file. So file URL is equal to new URL. And then just pass in the URL to it. There we go. And this is going to give me another warning. Come over here catch clause, boom, add catch clauses, and that's handled. Now I need to create a connection we're going to be able to use to read data from the URL. And to do that, HTTP, and I need a URL connection. And let's just call this URL connection, just to keep simple, it is equal to, I need to make sure it's set as a URL connection. Then I'll go file URL dot, and I need to open my connection. Once again, it's going to say, hey, you need to catch something. No problem. Come over here, add catch clause. We need to define that we're going to use the get method for reading this data, URL connection. And I'll say set request method. And this, of course, is going to be get. Say that we want to be able to use output from this connection, URL connection, set do output, and set that to true. Again, this is kind of copy and paste code. You're going to use pretty much the same thing every single time you're going to read files from the internet. And then I need to connect to my URL. And of course, just go connect. And there we go. Now that I have that connection, I need to get an input stream for reading this data. So input stream, let's just call it input stream, call URL connection, and say I want to get an input stream. Got it. 
Now I need to define the size of the buffers I'm going to use so that I can pull in this information in small little bytes and not overwhelm our system. It is equal to a new byte and let's say 1024. I'm also going to go and get my buffer length. Let's start and set it at zero in the beginning. You're going to see here in a second how that's used. Now I need to read in bytes of data from the stream until there's basically nothing left. And the way we do that is we say while, and then we're going to say buffer length is equal to input stream dot read, and then our buffer. And we're going to continue reading while that is greater than zero. And then as we're reading these in, we're also going to be writing this data to our file. So we'll go output stream and write and pass in the buffer and pass in zero and the buffer length, buffer length, there it is. So we're reading those in in bytes and writing them right after we read them. Now that we have all of those read in, we're now going to close our output stream because there's nothing more to write and we are done. That creates the entire intent service that's going to jump out there and read files based off of the URL that we provide. Okay, so now we're back over in main activity. And what we're going to need to do now is create our broadcast receiver so that it's going to be alerted so that it can read the data that has been saved to the file and then put it in the editable text box. Now to create a broadcast receiver, which is going to receive that broadcast from file service, we're just going to come in here and we're going to say private broadcast receiver and let's call it download receiver is equal to new broadcast receiver. You can see it automatically popped on receive inside of there. And then inside of here we could do something like let's say we want to put a log file inside of here just so we can track this. Okay, so we know that we received that. Let's go and move this out to another method. Show file contents, I don't know, that's a good enough name. And then of course at the end here we wanna put a semicolon. Now one thing that's important to do here with this broadcast receiver, let's copy that and then let's go back up inside of here on on create. We wanna come in here and initialize everything we're gonna need. We're going to create an intent filter and that's going to filter out specific intents. We are specifically going to be tracking for the intent that has the ID transaction done. And that's this guy over here, remember? Transaction done. That This is going to be the event that's going to be triggered that the broadcast receiver is going to be able to read. So we're going to say intent filter, just call it intent filter, is equal to new intent filter, of course. One other thing we want to do is come in here and initialize our editable text before we forget about it edit text and let's just call this download edit text and then we're going to take this and initialize it inside of on create makes sense make sure we convert it find view by id r dot id dot and there it is download edit text and there we go all right so we got that out of the way now we can worry about this intent and catching it properly now we're going to add to this intent filter that we just created here to watch out for the action and we can say file service dot transaction done and it's going to sit and it's going to wait for that to occur and then it's going to be handled by our broadcast receiver we just created and then we need to prepare our main thread to receive the broadcast and then act on it i'm going to create another method here in a second called register receiver and I'm specifically going to pass in our download receiver and our specific intent filter that we want to filter for. Now we have to create show file contents. Just come in here after this. Let's go to public void, show file contents, doesn't get anything passed to it. And let's say we want to build our string up from this local file that we're going to be reading from using a string builder. And again, we're going to put this inside of our editable text box. So we're going to be reading files, so that means we're going to have potential problems, so put it inside a try block. Then we're going to need to open a stream so we can read from our local file system. So file input stream, I don't know, it's called file is, and then we're going to say this, and open file for input, and what specific file? Well, it's called my file, and of course it's going to say, hey, you're going to have some problems here, you better catch this. Come over here and catch it, add catch clause. We need to then create an input stream to read our data. Input stream reader. Input stream reader is equal to new input stream reader. And then pass in our file input stream. And we're specifically going to be reading UTF-8. Can come in here, get the catch clause, move that up. Of course, we're going to create a buffered reader so we'll be able to read our data in small bytes. Once again, just to minimize load on our system. Let's just call it buffered reader. New buffered reader. Pass in our input stream reader. And let's go and initialize our string builder. Forgot to do that. There that is. And let's create a string called line. 
And then again, we're gonna read all of this data in in little pieces until it's all gone. So let's go line is gonna be equal to buffered reader and read a line, there it is. And we're gonna continue doing that as long as that's not equal to null. And then we're going to take each of these bytes that we read in here and we are going to add them to our string builder. So line, and let's say we also want to append a new line onto the end of this. Looks good. And then after we have all that done, we need to put our downloaded text into our editable text box. Downloaded editable text dot and set text. And then if we want to get everything from our string reader, just go to string and say we got a little error here, add catch clause. And there we go. And file save it. And let's jump over and see exactly what this looks like. Okay, so here's a simple application. There's just the download file, the editable text box. Then you can see it right there. And if I click on the download file, that's going to open up the intent service. It's going to download the file. It's going to issue an Android broadcast. The broadcast receiver is going to be picked up and it's going to be redisplayed in the editable text box. Okay, guys, so that is how we're going to be able to work with intent services, Android broadcast, Android broadcast receivers. And it's how to download files, read files, save files, and do a whole bunch of other different things. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.